Hi, and welcome along to the next in our series of Kubernetes security fundamentals videos. In the last couple of videos, we took time to look at how Kubernetes API security works and look at some of the various APIs that Kubernetes exposes. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna move on and talk about authentication. Obviously, authentication is a fairly important control. It's a big part of how any multi-user system works. You've got to make sure that you're only allowing the right users to get access to your system. So let's look quickly at how that works inside Kubernetes at a high level. Typically what happens whenever a request is made to a Kubernetes cluster, there are three stages that the request needs to pass before it is admitted and actioned on within the cluster. The first of these is authentication. So we want to make sure that whoever is requesting uh, access to the cluster has got valid credentials for that cluster. The later steps are authorization and admission control, and we'll talk about those more in a later series of videos. But let's focus a little bit on authentication first. Usually, um, when you're using a Kubernetes cluster, you will actually not use an inbuilt authentication method to actually authenticate the cluster. You'll use an external one. And this is kind of by design of how Kubernetes was set up to work. It has quite a flexible authentication model, but it tends to allow or rely on external authentication providers primarily. There are a couple of internal authentication mechanisms that ship with Kubernetes, but I would generally say those are not suitable for production user authentication. With that said, we're going to talk about one of those today, talk about how it works, and also to talk a bit about why it isn't suitable for user uh, authentication in production clusters. What we're going to talk about is we're going to look at client certificate authentication. This is of the internal authentication methods, probably one of the more used ones, um, and it's interesting to look at how it works and a bit about why it isn't actually the best idea when you're actually using uh, um, Kubernetes in production. So let's go to a terminal uh, and have a look at how it works. There are a couple of places where you do want to use client certificate authentication in clusters, and it's heavily used. One of these is where one of the components of Kubernetes is authenticating to another component of Kubernetes. So as we talked about in the previous videos, there's quite a few different components that make up a Kubernetes cluster, and those obviously need to authenticate to each other. To give an example, uh, the kubelet, which runs on the worker nodes in the cluster, will need to authenticate to the Kubernetes API server. To do that, it needs a valid set of credentials. So how does it do that? Let's actually look. If we do PSEF and we look for the kubelet, what we can see is we can see here on this host, we have a kubelet process. And that kubelet process is authenticating to the API server via a kubeconfig file, which is located at etc kubernetes kubelet.conf. So if I cat out that file, we can see at the bottom here, we have got credentials. So this is a client certificate file and a private key file. And these are held on disk for the kubelet to use. Notably, these are actually held without, uh, um, there's no password on that key file. Um, so if anyone can get access to that file, actually they get access to be a kubelet, uh, which is one of the fact, fact features of how client certificate authentication works. Another place where um, client certificate authentication is commonly used uh, is in providing the first user for a cluster. So you're just setting a cluster up and you haven't maybe set up an external authentication provider, you still need some kind of credential to actually authenticate to the cluster with. So typically what you do is you have a kind of break class user, a user that comes as part of the cluster. And um, in this case, we're using uh, kubeadm and it has a couple of those. So if you look in etc Kubernetes, we can see a couple of files here. We can see admin.conf and we can also see superadmin.conf. Now superadmin.conf is a new addition that only came in version 129. Um, but before that, it was just admin.conf. And these are both credentials that you can use um, essentially if you've not got an external authentication provider set up. Admin.conf is cluster admin, just a standard cluster admin user. And superadmin.conf is actually a member of the system masters group. Now that's a special group in Kubernetes and it bypasses all authorization checks. So it's an important one that even if your RBAC system is completely broken, uh, which you're using for authorization, um, you can still get access using this superadmin conf. But obviously you need to be very, very careful um, with how you handle that credential because it is persistent cluster admin access. So if we, you can actually use um, client certificates 
uh, for ordinary users to authenticate the cluster as well. Uh, and Kubernetes provides an API, which is the Certificate Signing Request API, uh, for you to do that. So um, whilst it is possible to do it all manually, you can create a client certificate manually, you can send it to the API. Uh, that's a kind of slightly long and involved process. So I've got a little utility here, um, which I use to actually do this. And we are going to create a new credential. Uh, and we can see here, we have issued a new credential. This is using the Certificate Center Request API to a username of test in no group, signed by Kubernetes, and it's valid for a year. Uh, and then if I do kubectl, we can use this config to try and authenticate to our cluster. Now, when I do that, what I get back is I get back a forbidden error message. Now that says I actually had a valid credential, um, but that credential does not have right authorization to actually list pods. And you can see here, user test. So it's correctly identified the user that we just created. Now, when I said uh, earlier on that um, client certificate authentication isn't a good idea for production clusters, the question might be, well, why isn't it a good idea? And there are a couple of reasons for that. The first one is that Kubernetes does not maintain a user database of credentials created via this mechanism. The, there is an object in the cluster, which is a certificate signing request object, but that's deleted after not too long automatically by the cluster. And after that, there's no way to track um, the credentials created this way. And, you know, I could create 10 cre different credentials for that user, and there'd be no way to track that those had been created. So it's not good, because obviously when you've got authentication database, you want to make sure you know all of the credentials that are valid for your cluster. And Kubernetes doesn't provide that as an option. Um, information about those credentials being created is included in the Kubernetes audit log if you have auditing enabled and you are auditing that API. Um, but that's not really a great way to track users either. Although I do recommend obviously that you have that, that facility turned on. The other reason why I typically say you should not use client certificate authentication um, for ordinary users in production clusters is that there is no way to revoke credentials or no easy way to revoke credentials created via this mechanism. Kubernetes does not support certificate revocation and at this point probably never will. Um, as a result, if a user leaves the organization or a user moves department and you want to change the rights they have to the cluster or a credential is lost or stolen, um, it's very difficult to make that credential, credential no longer valid. In reality, what you have to do is rotate the keys for the entire certificate authority of the cluster, which is a disruptive operation and definitely not something you'd want to do as part of regular practice. Maybe as a, an emergency procedure, it might be okay, but definitely not something you want to do in regular practice. So typically you don't want to use this um, for user authentication. It's worth noting, however, that um, client certificate authentication is valid as a mechanism uh, for pretty much every Kubernetes distribution apart from EKS and GKE Autopilot. Um, where it's, it's restricted or disabled. Uh, so if an attacker can ever get access to this API, they can actually create valid credentials for the cluster. So one to protect and audit appropriately. So that was a bit of a look at client certificate authentication. Uh, and in the next video, what we're going to do is move on and talk about some of the other inbuilt authentication mechanisms that Kubernetes provides and the drawbacks and use cases that those have. Um, as ever, uh, there is more information about this subject on our security labs blog, which is linked in the description of the video below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.